Hey, how you all doing? You having a good time so far? Yeah, cool. Yes, we are. Solemn. Okay, great. I appreciate that. You're in the zone. Cool. Um, so yeah, my name's Toby, as this giant screen says, um, and I'm a writer from Leicester, straight out of Leicester, as was just said. Um, and I was asked to come here and to perform one of my poems to you, which I'm going to do. And when we were talking ages ago about me coming here, and I was asked to come here, and I was thinking about what poem I would perform, um, I was thinking about what the themes of today were, um, and what the themes of this event are, talking about bravery and courage and pride, and what those things mean, what they really mean, and what they mean to me, and what they've meant in my life. And I thought, I, I have to perform this particular poem today, because this is TEDx Youth. You're all very youthful. Uh, I like to think I'm youthful, but I'm less youthful <laughs> now than I used to be, obviously, as everyone is. Uh, and uh, that made no sense. And um, yeah, I realized that I left school. I finished my GCSEs 10 years ago, which is terrifying. Um, and when I was at school, I found it very difficult to find my courage and to find who I was and accept who I was and be proud of who I was. And some of you in here today, some of you watching online might feel a similar way, might have had similar experiences. And since I left school, I've done a lot of work in and outside of schools with young people and groups of young people. And I found that sadly, the problems that I faced when I was at school and the issues that were going on when I was at school and the stigma that was there when I was at school is still very much there now and is still very much a problem for young people today. And it's something that not enough people, not enough adults are talking about and doing something about. And so I wanted to come here today and, and talk about it and perform this poem for you and share my experience with you. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, this poem is called A Lion's Pride. And basically I went to this all boys state school in Leicester for five years when I was growing up, right? It was a sports college as well, it's pretty brutal. Uh, and I thrived, no, I just <laughs> didn't do any sports, uh, so it's great for me. And um, yeah, we, the, the logo on our blazers was this golden lion. And in our first ever assembly, our head teacher told us that we would grow from spotty little cubs into full maned men ready to seize the world at 16, ready to take a mate from the girls' school next door as nature had intended. I know of only one who admitted to not wanting that, and he was reduced to carcass. The smell of his blood in the playground served as a warning. This was not that kind of pride. So we all met up with the girls in the walk home wilderness, we all learned the Nokia 3210 mating calls. And I learned how to convince myself that this felt right. But it's kind of like telling yourself that you're a lion when your ribs stripe your insides tiger. When you have pink flamingo lining your lungs, each breath in is a chest full of shame. A hearty reminder of how disgusting you are, each breath out, a red flag that you are always wiping from your lips the smell of mealtime, that you're constantly washing from your skin, and some nights, the thought of what kind of animal you might be is too much to tame. And then school the next morning, and it's happening again. The teachers are defending the weak from the teeth of their hunters, saying, why do you keep bothering him? Do you fancy him? Are you gay? Met by a classroom of hyena cackle, we were never more than the butt of an accepted joke never acknowledged by chalkboards, textbook, not once in five years with the punchlines embroidered into my chest explained to me. How we feed the beast, how we breed intolerance and act surprised at its ferocity, how we teach the word tolerance like diversity was something to be put up with, like it with a limp dog in the pack, the lame bitch, how she is first to be turned on when the heat is up. When my cousin told her teachers that the jungle fight had become too hot, that she could no longer outrun the howls of dyke that chased her down corridors, they told her, well, you shouldn't have cut your hair so short. How we feed the beast. How we it gets better people into believing the promises that we refuse to keep. How our silence hangs like a noose 
how it cries like a gun, it bleeds like a dance floor. This is why when they ask, well, why don't we get straight bars? Straight parades, why don't we get a straight parade? We say, you do, you have a straight pride. We watch it snarl down these streets. I have felt its fear and its teeth and we refuse to celebrate it anymore. Thank you.